Deutschland, to you, Tag Monarchs. I'm hanging out with uh, one of my friends here, AAUB076. She's about to take off on the migration, and she's been tagged, hence the code, giving her a little bit of uh, extra energy to help boost the chances of her making the migration. When it comes to tagging the monarchs, it's incredibly useful to the scientists who study migration, and in fact, it's somewhat necessary. Depending upon your location in North America, if there's monarchs that migrate, then yes, there's a tagging program in your area. Might have to do a little bit of research to find it. If you're east of the Rockies like I am, Monarch Watch is one option. You can get tagging kits for a very low cost from monarchwatch.org, and they start sending them out. Usually it's been August 1st. Not sure if that'll change in the future, but for now, August 1st. You want to get there early, because they do get scooped up. MonarchWatch.org has actually made some requests this year in the, uh, the message that they send out with their tagging kits and also available on their blog. Because the data is so valuable, they've asked for more taggers in different locations. And especially in western Iowa, western Minnesota, all the way over to areas of Nebraska and north and south Dakota. That area has not as many taggers as they would like to get the data that they need to more fully understand the migration and the migratory routes. They've also made another request, and this makes pretty good sense. When it comes to those who tag, it tends to be monarch hobbyists. People who are doing what we do. People who are rearing monarchs that they find the eggs or caterpillars for, rear them, and then release them. And so it's pretty easy that those monarchs get tagged. We have an easy chance to tag them before release. However, something that they are in more need of is wild monarch tagging. So this would be when you go out into a field and find a monarch out there in nature, an adult, and you catch it, tag it, and release it. And while there are hobbyists who do this and only do this and don't rear any monarchs, still, there's a imbalance of how much data is there for those that were reared at home and released compared to those that were wild caught, tagged, and released. They need more wild monarchs tagged. Because of this, this season, I actually ordered double the amount of tags. So that way I could tag all the ones that I was rearing during the migratory season, but then also have some tags specifically for trying to get onto wild monarchs. My strategy was going to be to go out to a wildflower field that I know of, and hopefully there's monarchs there, go find them, catch them with my net, tag them and release them. And I didn't know how easy or how difficult that was going to be. But something about the monarch migration is that during this time of the year, monarchs, as they're going along those paths, may find an area that they would like to make a pit stop at. In some cases, this just might be a, a random tree in someone's yard that the monarchs say, here, and that person might make the nightly news. In other cases, it might be a place where there's a decent and good source of nectar-producing flowers, and so they might be in that location to kind of stock up on some energy before continuing on the route. Well, two days ago, the principal at my school, Mr. Mark Horak, a man who is amazing and very pivotal in helping me become the teacher that I am today, he let me know about something that was happening at his mother's house. Over the weekend, he had been along a path where he saw plentiful monarchs roosting in trees, flying all around the field. That was September 3rd. So that day that he told me this, I went over to his mother's location, went down that same trail, and I was floored. I had never seen anything like this, never experienced it. There was just so many monarchs, way more than I had ever seen out in nature. Hanging out in trees, flying all around the fields, I was a pretty excited dude. Definitely, this was the exact kind of opportunity that I was looking for to do some wild tagging and try to help out Monarch Watch and those who study the migration in general. So yesterday, I revisited the area, equipped with nets, camera, and tripod, on the quest to tag some wild monarchs. But I couldn't do it all myself. I needed some help. Ready to oblige was Mr. Horrock's mother, Margaret, and Mr. Horrock's son, Maverick. When we got there, there was fewer monarchs than there had been just the day before. But still, there was plenty to keep us busy. So we're going to check that out. But first, if you're interested in tagging wild monarchs, you're going to need a butterfly net. So let me give you a quick rundown on two effective ways that I've found to use them. And then, let's go check out those monarchs. Here we go. Alright, when it comes to butterfly nets, something for specifically catching butterflies, and any other flying insect really, is the length of the net. You want something that is very deep or long, whichever way you want to say it. So that way, when you're catching something mid-flight, you can get good at doing a quick twist of the wrist. So that way, if something falls down in here or is captured down into the depth of your net, when you do a quick little flick, 
it closes it off so the insect can't easily get up through this portion. The ring of the neck kind of makes a bit of a barrier and closes it off. So that way it can remain in there safe, hopefully undamaged. If you're doing it right, no damage will happen. And then you can gently retrieve the insect. This tissue can serve as a butterfly, for example. So when it's mid-flight, I can catch it and then quickly flick and close off that end of the net. Then it's easier to kind of, with one hand, grasp where the butterfly might be gently, so that way you can put in your other hand and retrieve the butterfly. Then it'll be ready to tag, and if you need further details on how to tag, well, I've got a video for that as well, as do others online. My video will be in the description below. Now another technique for using your net that can be effective, if you have an insect, again represented by this tissue here, that's perched on a plant, maybe it's feeding from a flower, maybe it's just resting, if you approach it carefully, something that you can do would be to hold this net portion up and then just trying to cover the insect and then when it's startled, when it flies off, it's going to fly likely up into your net. Not every time, but sometimes. Observe. Approach carefully and then just place the net on top and if it flies up, it flies up into our depth of our net portion. Unless it's a tissue, in which case it falls out. Now, nets that are specifically entomological nets designed like this, they can be a little bit on the pricey side, so shop around. When it comes to people asking me where I got mine, well, I got mine from my school. We had some nets like this and just needed to duct tape it to some type of long reach instrument. And if you do purchase a net, it might even be worth your time to find a, a longer length of a, a handle to your net, so that way you have just that much more range as far as using it. I duct taped mine onto an uh, old gardening tool handle. Well, okay, let's go out into the field, let's go out to the Horrocks and show you our experience. All right, so we're out here on the Horrock farm. We're with two helpers, Margaret and Maverick. Hello. <laughs> so what we're gonna attempt to do is catch and tag some of the monarchs that are on their migratory routes. They've uh, decided to do a little pit stop here, probably because of how much nectaring wildflowers are are along the, uh, the pathway. So we'll be scooping them up, putting the tags on, and then releasing. Here we go. All right, Maverick. So, as we showed you, go ahead and start slipping your hand in there and just get it close near to the butterfly. It's not that you have to be putting your fingers there just yet. Okay. It's on you. <laughs> okay. Do you want to put... They don't bite. No. You want to put your fingers right where those wings are connecting. I get some net. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Awesome. First one. First one to be tagged. But we got to give it the tag. You ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. A A U B one twenty five. Go ahead and point where the tag is going to go. Like right around there. Right around there. Yep. So go ahead and put that tag right on there. Now, with your other two fingers, just very gently press on both sides just a little bit so that way it definitely is stuck. And you did it! You tagged a butterfly! Huh? Right? Yeah. Success. So now that he's tagged, you can release him. He wants to stay with you. <laughs> How sweet was that? Wow. Didn't hurt his flight at all. What's the cool slang word for your age? Like, was that radical? Was it? It was lit. Can you say that to the camera? It was lit. It was lit. <laughs> Yeah.
It's a good catch. <laughs> okay, monarch number two. Now, if you start putting your hand in there, he might be able to fly out through it. So just watch the net carefully that he doesn't get out. You shall be my retriever. Once we got him in the net, I'm going to trust your small hands to grab him out of there. Got him? Excellent. Okay, let's get the tag. Grab that off my finger. Yeah. Release whenever you feel like it, whenever you're ready. He's just taking a nap. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>